it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers we are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question and that is how do i manage this feeling of feeling dirty or tainted as a result of really sort of projections or boundary violation from someone who is trying to control or shape or negatively influence you. Somebody who maybe is narcissistic or something of that nature, but really I wanna focus in on that feeling and how to clear that. How to clear out that feeling of feeling dirty or tainted, meaning shamed or not good enough and just sort of just not feeling very clean, clear, having a sharp focus and being at peace and harmony. But before we get started, I just want to give a super huge shout out to those who have recently made a donation or emailed me and thanked me for the channel. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to host these sessions, to discuss these topics and entertain your questions and hear your stories. Your story is so important. However, it's important that you change the story that you continue to replay. So let's get into that feeling of clearing that feeling. So when you feel dirty, you feel uncomfortable. There's an anxiety, an anxiousness, a stress or pressure from other people, particularly that of projection and false accusations. So it's important to remember to clear that out that the people who are projecting, it is their issue, it is their anger, it is their hostility, it is their trepidation and insecurity, oftentimes what is lacking, not only in them, but in their life, or even for their perspective of life as a whole, it, there's a feeling of being blamed. So there's a blame or being bogged down. So. When there's this boundary violation, meaning there's, you know, there's honesty and transparency, which is a feeling of clarity, meaning being rigorously honest, not being on a guilt trip and being bogged down by that fear and being in that limbic resonance. When you are transparent, it's saying this is what it is and this is where we are at. This is the junction. This is the crossroads. This is where we're at in the present moment. This is what we have. So let's take a time out and let's come to the present. Clearing out, you know, that those false accusations or the trepidation of the future. So if you're living in that projection and feeling dirty, there's this feeling of being tainted or what is projected onto you that is not your problem, okay, but it is their problem, their trepidation, their unhappiness that they are projecting, meaning they are thrusting forward this energy, which is a negativity. So we need to understand what is negative and what is the positive. How does the positive feel? You need to be able to memorize that in the body. What does happiness feel like? What does happiness look like? What does happiness sound like? What does happiness taste like? What is your gut feeling when you're on the path of happiness? What does it feel like when you are in alignment and it flows through you 100%? What does that feel like when you step up and forward or just in a state of being? Or perhaps you're doing something, you're being more gentle with life. What you need to really get a picture, get a sound, get a taste, get a feel, get an intuition and get an awareness of what happiness and clarity is for you. You need to be able to rehearse and memorize that feeling and own it, carry it with you, be it. Now, but I want you to practice and rehearse and memorize. If you don't catch on to that feeling and keep it going like you know you put engine you know you put gas into an engine so it can run 
your positive motion, emotions need to be like the fuel, the gas, the juice, the energy that propels you and energizes you and runs the engine of your body, mind, and spirit so you can see that, feel that, and live in that. Life is too short to spend all of it suffering, struggling, doubting, and analyzing. Analysis is when you get over analytical, you will get into a paralysis. So paralysis meaning stuck, fearful, and then, you know, you've got that sort of like you're feeling that you're your nerves are on fire, um, you're uncomfortable, you feel that your body is collapsing, uh, you know, your body is kind of going down, you need to um, adjust that so that <clears throat> you are understand. you need to take time to practice it. It's like an, an, an exercise where you're liberated. Shake it out. Get time to stretch. I want you to break that pattern. So people have a pattern. The, the subconscious mind will just follow commands that you give it. So a lot of the co commands are unconscious or you don't think about, you don't hear, you don't deliberately cultivate them. In order to clear your energy, you need to deliberately empty yourself out of those projections. What they look like, what they sound like, what they feel like, what they taste like how it how that negativity feels versus the positive the negativity oftentimes can be a projection of somebody who is trying to get you on their level so someone who doesn't have a really clear connection with you but is needing to connect with you for whatever reason um they could be a sibling they could be a boss they could be a neighbor they could be your child, they could be your spouse, it could be a stranger, okay, or someone that you recently met. So if you have a need, not necessarily a want, but a need that this person has to communicate with you, and they're trying to get you down on their level, they're going to use that lower vibration. Lower vibration meaning one of accusation, one of um, them removing the control from you, taking the control, taking that happiness vibe, that happy place, which you need to have, own, and live in, drive in, eat in, drink in, shower in, that happy place. You know, you get a pillow that says, my happy place or happy place. Get that on, you know, go to your local store and you know, or even paint a sign. I talk about this all the time. You don't need, it's not outside of you. You can in, inside create a piece, get a piece of paper, get a big pen and write my happy place. Write it in yellow, pink, purple, whatever your colors are and put it, you know, with some flowers or smiles or whatever feeling. Maybe it's a religious symbol. Maybe it's a picture of a building. Maybe it's a picture of a mountain or a stream or a creek. What does your happy pace place look like? For some people, it might be the grandeur of nature. For some people, it might be flowers or technology or music. So you need to have that around you because it's going to feed and remind and, and basically you need to um, hack that feeling. And so I talk about the recovery gift and giving yourself a recovery gift at least once a week that reminds you and triggers you to be happy. So rather than being triggered to being feeling dirty, tainted, uh, falsely accused from projections from another and their fear, <clears throat> because what it is, it's their fear that they are putting onto you, like, I'm not dealing with this. How about you? They're delegating their fear onto you. So people who are really in that, they're very, very practiced at that, meaning they do it over and over and over again. It is something that they necessarily don't think about. They just do it. It's just automatic. So knowing this to be the case, understand that you cannot control people. Give up that feeling of shame. It's just like this, and I use a lot of parallels or analogies to help you to understand. <clears throat> 
if it were to rain in your neighborhood, okay, or be windy, or have lightning, would you try to control that because it made you uncomfortable, okay? Or would you, would you understand, I can't control the winds, I love the wind, it blows and it keeps me cool and it plays with my hair and it moves my clothes around and it's like a thousand fingers massaging me and I just let there and I let it blow over me. That's one of the best feelings in the world. You know, or riding, you know, your bike with the wind blowing through your hair or rolling your windows down or, you know, opening up the window. You know, you're letting that in and it's cultivating that feeling of peace and happiness and harmony and being at one with your environment. But sometimes it rains. Sometimes the wind blows really hard and it might blow the rain in your window. Hey, I don't want to destroy my furniture. Let's close the window. You know, let's um, dry off the table. Let's dry off, you know, whatever it is, the lamp or whatever it is that was getting wet. And let's deal with it. So, but you don't, you know, if you're getting angry that, or um, if you're fearful or trying to control the fact that it's raining, you're setting your set up, yourself up for failure. Oh no, it's raining. Oh no, this or that. Let go of that because that's a need to control or feel perfect or be perceived as perfect or whatever it is. But the same thing, you cannot control others the same way you can't control the wind. You can't control the lightning. You can't control the rain. It just is. It's going to come and go. Storms pass. So, but you know how to appreciate, admire, or, you know, seek shelter when it is this weather. So it's a similar thing. It's knowing that you provide that internal shelter, like a bubble of protection all around you. This can be cultivated through feeling and meditation. Pulling up the image of a large circle which surrounds you, like the bubble that you might see from a bubble machine, one big bubble that surrounds you with pure, radiant, powerful, strong white light. And if you hold that image of a bubble of golden light surrounding you and then pouring you on through the crown of your head, golden white light seeping down almost like the way, you know, you were when a kid, I don't know if you all did this, but remember when you were kids, you'd hit somebody on the head and you go like this, you know, egg falling down, egg falling down, and practice that feeling of calm and positive tingly feeling rolling down through the coming entering into the top of your head spilling over into your body th radiating through your entire body all of your trillions of cells are filled with this energy and rolling out or rolling through you processing through you energizing you and you're in a protected circle it, you are protected. It's a calling up of awareness, which is your internal boundary. You need to have a boundary and a barrier for yourself. Do they teach you this in, in kindergarten? Do they teach you this at your job? Maybe not. Why are we doing the channel? Because we need to do this. We need to learn and use these tools and resources, which is cultivated through, I mean, these are the tools of the ancients back thousands and thousands of years ago. Why not stand on the shoulder of giants? These are tools and resources that have been passed down through the ages and the generations and the millennia. This is what we have to work with. Why not use the tools of the great leaders and spiritual um, guides and, and high thinking in high order folks from back in the day who have given us these tools. And, you know, no matter what culture it comes from, it can be tapped into by any human being. So it doesn't matter if you're male or female, tall or short, living on A Street or B Street. This is a tool. So you need to understand and practice and rehearse this vibe and this feeling. Just like you eat until you're full, you need to pull and call up that image. Um, visualization is manifestation. So you, you have to understand you have this ability as a human being. You literally have 
creative powers. Just like you create what's in your refrigerator, just like you sleep in the you know you 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 sleep in the bed that you make, you know you are creative. And there's the law of the lid. If you feel you can only live down here in your tiny little saucepan, then that's all you're gonna have. But if you feel that you're a you know, you want to make something in a big Dutch oven or a big, you know, um, roasting pan and do a roast beef or a turkey or a special chicken or a veggie lasagna, whatever it is, you literally create that, correct? So let's get the tools and the resources to understand that you create the clarity and the light that energizes your spirit. Your and your your spirit is housed in your body. And you need to give some attention to that happy place. You need to recognize and embrace it like an old friend. OMG, I have not seen you in 30 years. Give me a hug. You know, it's embracing that pure, positive, protected self that you have within you that you need to pull up and recognize and embrace. You literally need to embrace that positive, potent, power within you which has no other combativeness around big big circle surrounding you okay big big circle i mean this is my hands here imagine this big circle like a big bubble surrounding you and protecting you you own that that is yours to keep it is radiating from the heart through the gut up through the spine the central nervous system through the ch the crown chakra in your head which goes all the way up and extends through infinity. Sorry guys, but if you are on planet Earth, you have divine intelligence running through you. Period, end of story. An intelligence which is beyond what you know. Beyond if you think you're stupid, uh, dirty, tainted, shameful, don't listen to that lower message. It's like allowing spam, emotional spam, to take over your life. It's like saying, just because this flyer came in the mail, someone wants to do, you know, this and this, doesn't mean you focus on the spam or, you know, think of it as spam. It is spam to get you <clears throat> hooked in and perhaps distracted. Do not be distracted. When you practice this <clears throat> and you are a house for the light, you are a light worker, you're able to see and recognize, not react, but observe and recognize when negative projection comes your way. Here it comes. Here comes trouble. You don't have to feel that. You don't, you know, because if you say here comes trouble, then you're going to be, you know, fearful. But you want to acknowledge and validate and have a name for what that is. So um, you might want to call it, you know, that's the sensor, or it's going to take a bite out of me, or it's going to try to pop my bubble. The bubble and circle that surrounds you, the energetic vibration of light that fills your trillions of cells, cannot be penetrated. I mean, it is literally that strong. You have to call it forth. You have to believe. You have to trust. You have to embrace, and you have to be. Period. End of story. But this person is my mother. But this person is my spouse. But this person is my boss. But this is you. You are the most important person in this equation. You. Y-O-U. We got text. You want to put it as a you or whatever it is. You need to own that. That is the number one. That came forth before everything else. The tabula rasa, the clean slate, Thomas Rousseau, who talked about this in all the extensive literature that I have read and studied for decades, talks about this. That's why I'm talking about this on this channel. This is what I have studied. I mean, there's all sorts of information that is a testimony to this. However, if all you do is read the headlines of today's news, if all you do is listen to the projections, the false accusations, and absorb the looks, then you're taking in emotional spam. No, thank you very much. You know, that spam is 
uninteresting, it doesn't pertain to me, it's getting me to be distracted. So you need to use the tool of cognitive reframing to relabel the meaning that you are absorbing and interpreting. So almost like a foreign language, you need to learn the language of the soul, the language of emotions, the images that are called forth that you are processing subconsciously. Meaning you've got these sub subconscious templates and images all the time. Think of it like a fast creek. Have you ever seen a fast moving river? It's got a current. You know, maybe you've stepped in it, maybe you've observed it, maybe you've just seen it on TV or Netflix or a film. But if you look at a river, it has a current. It's being pulled through in a specific direction. This is the law of nature. Gravity is, okay? These are also laws of human nature. You are a human being. We're not taught about human nature and behavior and behavior modification in all the psychological complexity that you are, the intricacy, the, you know, the diphthongs and globules on your tongue to articulate, to be clear in the throat chakra, to be clear in the heart chakra, to be clear in the solar plexus, to be clear in your groundedness. Okay, I talk about all the different things that we do, the recovery date, to get grounded, doing something special that nurtures you and that in, inner solar plexus, that inner spirit, that guiding light that is pure, strong, and powerful, that does not have resistance from another. Resistance meaning, mm, I'm going to block you. Mm, I'm going to criticize you. Mm, I'm going to knock you down. Mm, I'm going to give you the look. Mm, I'm, I'm going to give you that tension. Literally, thoughts are things, and you can feel that emanating out if you are an empath. So I know we have a lot of viewers who are an empath, so they're particularly sensitive. So when this dirty stuff comes running along, it is like a polluted, toxic river. <clears throat> if you go ahead and dive in, you're taking a risk if you're not protecting yourself. <clears throat> Where's your hazmat suit? Where are your waterproof gloves? Where are your waterproof boots? Where? Why aren't you protecting yourself before going into the toxic sludge? It's just like when we heard about that big event <clears throat> um, when uh, there was a big tsunami in Japan several years ago and it affected that nuclear reactor and like everybody had to exit the area for like a two or three mile radius. You know, radioactivity ain't ain't living with radioactivity and cooking your food and you know it is not, it is on um it is incompatible with the human system in other words it's going to destroy and damage so knowing that to be the case you would not live alone in a radioactive town would you so you have to ask yourself and so you have to understand the human nature and how it taints and how it feels and know the feeling of, of, of purity and alignment and practicing that and having that, you have to do that in the privacy of these videos, the privacy of your meditation, your mindfulness throughout the day, the deliberate effort that you take for your recovery pages, your recovery date, your recovery gift, having a mentor and realize that these people, if you can relabel them, <clears throat> meaning, the, the meaning that you are placing to them needs to change. You know, this person is, you know, equating me with something. You know, so that's a, a misunderstanding. That is flawed thinking. So you have to use the tool of cognitive reframing to look at the meaning that you are taking out or interpreting from what the person is saying, doing, or looking. In other words, are they trying to distract me? You know, um, and rather than being pulled in, saying and labeling it and say, okay, that's just that person and their tension. I'm going to carry on. That's that person and their anxiety and their 
trepidation and insecurity, I'm going to move on. That is theirs. I'm not going to be bogged down by the blame and the projection that makes you feel dirty. Okay, um, clear that out. So you have to call forth that that tool of visualization as a human being. You have the, once you're out of the fight or flight, which means once you're out of that guilt um, and that anxiety, you can begin to plan for the future. You can only free up and liberate yourself once you clear that out and release the fear and give it back to them, give it back to the universe. Just like the spam, I'm going to throw it out. It's going to be recycled. You know, it doesn't pertain to me. This anxiety, you know, I can acknowledge it, but I need to practice a new feeling and breathe through it, walk through it, change your routine. You know, on your day, practice your free will. Oh, I always sit and I do this at night. You know, take 10 minutes and go outside and just look at the sky and feel the wind and just take a moment to look up into the stars and stargaze. Look up at the moon and moon gaze. Look up at the beautiful clouds, the clouds that Michelangelo painted and look how tremendous. Go out and just touch a tree and just feel how strong it is. Go out in the grass with your bare feet and allow the negative ions of the earth to ground you. The earth will take out all that negativity and leave you refreshed. This is the ionic nature that you have to get in touch with. People back in the day who were nomadic and living, you know, close to the ground, they would sit on the ground, they would absorb the pure earth energy directly through their feet, through their hands. They touched the earth, they cultivated the earth, they cultivated the natural animals who were here running through wild, they were domesticated, they learned how to train them. You need to learn and train yourself. Push it out. No, thank you. Just get used to it and then get used to making commands, speaking them into the environment and speaking them out through the clear the throat chakra. No, thank you. No emotional spam. I don't need this emotional spam. It's just, it's just junk. Okay. It's junk thoughts. It's junk emotions. Begin to identify what is junk and what is valuable to you. Breathe through it. Walk through it. Move through it. Meaning break the pattern for a moment. Liberate yourself and then your, your mind will be able to pull back positive memories that you have cleared out and worked through. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day. Break that routine. Go out. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Do your recovery date. Enforce it for yourself. You'll be glad you did. You are the captain of your ship. Find the smooth waters, take it where you want it, and get the vista and the views that you deserve to bask in the light. Find that happy place and own it and keep it with you throughout the day and throughout the night and throughout all your days and all your evenings. Do it now.